All right, folks, the uh, following podcast is coming to you just a little bit late because uh, some things in our life that yep, we're doing. A little going bit of transition. On. Yeah, but it'll regularly start showing on Mondays. And uh, the next little series that we're doing of podcasts, we're going to be calling... When Are We? When Are We? It seems an odd thing to say, odd no. question, but yeah, come uh, back around. Yep, <laughs> stick with us. Maybe you'll understand why, why we're asking the question of when are we, not just where are we, but when. Yeah. Yep. Looking forward to being with you. Yep. All right. So these should be coming out regularly on Mondays. So uh, take it away, Bruce and Jason. Here we go. Well, hello and uh, welcome to On This Hill, our podcast from Church on the Hill. Um, I was gone for a little bit. Yeah. Where'd you go? Where were you on vacation? Yep. Yeah. Just uh, <laughs> took a quick trip down to Ensenada and now we were uh, on a missions trip. Yeah, I heard uh, Heard it went well. We had a great team. I think it's 49 people in total and we built three homes which is awesome. Um, it was fun work, but then we also got to do some really cool stuff working in churches and uh, orphanages and soup kitchens and, and everything else. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you, what do you in, in, a, in a week, you can mm-hmm. build three homes. So the yeah. team of 50 more or less built three homes. Yeah. Uh, which are great because it's something you leave behind for mm-hmm. a family that was obviously in need of a Yeah. I know people home. are skeptical when they hear that, when, and they should be because that's not how you typically build a home, but we're working with an organization called Homes of Hope, and Homes of Hope has it down to a science. Uh, There is a cement pad there. When when we get there, we just start framing, start sheetrocking, start roofing, and uh, build a a really decent little home. And then we don't even uh, just leave it empty, but we fill it with uh, bunk beds and kitchen, countertop, (laughs) I mean, everything that they need to operate. And we even go to the grocery store and buy, I think we spent... Six or seven hundred dollars in groceries nice, um, to get them set up. To get them all set up, yeah, and then hand the keys to them and pray for them. And it doesn't matter if they're a believer or an unbeliever. We're just there to bless them. But uh, obviously, um, sometimes they become believers in the process. Just yeah. the witness of yeah. uh, being loved on like that. So when you uh, at the end of the week and you have everything set and you gather everybody and you hand them that key, yeah, um, this is a family that obviously doesn't have a home. They'd be right. homeless without what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And again, the home is relatively small compared to American standards. But yeah. uh, what, uh, what what's that moment like for the people who built the home and for the people who are receiving the home? Well, for the people that built the home, I think um, there's this amazing sense of, um, I mean, I know this is a loaded word right now, but privilege. Mm-hmm. Like, they can't help but realize, oh my goodness, you know, we, we cranked out this home, it's nice. But I've got it pretty good. But it would fit in my garage, my two-car garage. Yeah. And and that's just my garage. And that doesn't matter if you're a middle schooler or we took, you know, a guy in his 70s there. I think everyone walks away and goes, um, man, I the, the status I think I have and the status I actually have are, are I'm skewed because I look around me and I see bigger and better. And, and when I see less, I realize, oh, I have so much more than I think I have. I can be so much more generous than I thought I could be. I thought I needed to be stingy, but I'm actually incredibly rich. Yeah. Um, and then for the people that, that receive it, I mean, I can only speak from, from watching on the outside, but you can just tell they are, um, they're, they're thanking us, but they're thanking God more. Yeah. They really are. They see a bigger picture. Uh, yeah, and and for the most part, you know, these families they jump in with us. They build with us. The the home that, that my team built, um, it was for a grandma, uh, her two kids, and one of those kids had a baby. So there there was no um, adult male in the home. Mm. So you know, she was helping out here and there, and, and other family was helping out where where they could. But it, she was just in a situation that without a hand. She, she was going to be stuck. She, she could not do That's as much as hard as the workers they were, and they were a very hardworking family. They simply could not elevate themselves out of the place they were in. Yeah. And so, having having a church come in and love on them like that, I think was transformative for them. I think it's so interesting, you know, that what you just said right there. Having a church come in and love on them. So, church uh, is something we're going to talk about today yeah. um, because we we get a fair amount of questions on a regular basis mm-hmm. that are. Uh, Somewhere along the line of, hey, how do you think, how are, part of it's personal as mm-hmm. pastors, there's two pastors sitting here and doing this podcast, so oftentimes uh, somebody we haven't seen in a long time 
will come back into our lives in the form of coming to a service or yeah. or just meeting us in the street or giving us a call. And they'll say, how are you guys doing? Mm-hmm. And then oftentimes they'll ask, say, how do you think the church is doing? And of course, mm-hmm. they're asking that in the context of the last few years of all the turmoil right. uh, and, and and just yeah. the, the, the series of events of 2021, 22, mm-hmm. and now here we are in 2023, and we're just starting to... Uh, come back to maybe what some people would call normal, but I think there's yeah. a sense with us that normal is never going to be normal again. Things have changed. Mm-hmm. What do you think of that? Do you... Yeah, good question. Because we talk to a lot of pastors too, right. and, and when you talk to another pastor, you kind of ask that question, like, "How's your church yep. doing?" Kind of like you ask, "How's their marriage?" Like, yeah, how's because, your family? Because yeah. it is this relationship yeah. that we have. Um, I, I think Barna, which is great at doing statistics, will tell you one answer, and and their answer. It doesn't isn't super hope filled. Um, the, the statistics point towards decline, uh, and I don't ignore statistics. However, I don't elevate them above what the Holy Spirit is saying and doing. Yeah. in a church, and so. Um, so when I, you say decline, yeah, what does that mean? It, well, it, what is Barna saying? Statistically, they are saying that that uh, church attendance is going down. That okay. small churches are closing. Right. And uh, larger churches are growing, but they're growing because of at the expense of like the expense of the smaller churches. Smaller churches. Yeah. And again, I would never ignore that because I think those are those are true statistics. Uh, I don't really even debate them. Um, however, uh, I, I think there's a truth that's happening locally too um, mm-hmm. that is different than that. And I, I think some of the metrics that you should pay attention to are babies and baptisms. Those are mm-hmm. two. Great health, yeah. you know, indicators, yeah. and Bibles. Uh, are people paying attention to their Bible? Mm-hmm. Money, marriages, mental health, right? Emotional, mental health. emotional health. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think um, I, I don't. I wouldn't say that we're we're all A's, but I I think we're, we're I think we're healthy. Yeah, I think we're doing well. Here, you're, f- you're referring to... I'm referring to church on the hill. Church on the hill. Church yeah, on the hill yeah. If, if I talked about the church in general, there's a bigger conversation to, to, to be had, and we can have that one. But I think here at Church on the Hill, um, when, you, when you come on a Sunday and you see there's 200 kids being checked in, uh, and you walk into the nursery, which I actually served in the nursery this, this weekend, because we're in family <laughs> month, and so other people were in the pulpit, and I, I got to be in the nursery, and you see these little kids running around, and the people that are bringing them in of varying degrees of health in their family, but they're here. You know, some of them very healthy, some of them like, please take this kid, I yeah. need a break. Uh, yeah. it's, it's amazing. You, we, you realize, oh, there's life. There's, there's lots of life here. And the same with, with baptisms. We're regularly baptizing people. Right. Uh, we do baptisms yeah. once a month here. And those baptisms, when you ask them, hey, why are you being baptized today? Christ has transformed their life. They've yeah. gone from death to life. That's 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 life again. Yeah. A few weeks ago, I, I, I shared a story with our staff about uh, just three Sundays ago, mm-hmm. two women came in and uh, they um, they made a point to say hello to me after an eleven o'clock, and mm-hmm. they were introducing themselves. Right. And they mentioned this yeah. is our first time, and yeah, I assumed I met those ladies. that they were saying it was their first time visiting us. Mm-hmm. But then when I sort of pressed into the conversation, the lady said to me, about a forty year old woman said. Uh, no, this is the first time I've ever been in church in my entire life, yeah. which was shocking to me because I thought in America, how is that possible? But obviously, it is because yeah. she, and she began to sort of uh, feed back to me kind of what that experience was like. Yeah. And I thought, I wonder how many others are out there. I thought, what a switch! People who have been in church for forty years mm-hmm. are leaving, and people who have never been in church are coming. It's almost yeah. like a, 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 a maybe like a tide. Right. What, so people ask us, you know, all the time. Well, what do you think? Uh, if there's not enough time, or I don't think anybody could actually figure out what happened over the last couple mm-hmm. of years, because we had a series of of crises and events. Right. We had the forest fires in Oregon. We had pandemics. Mm-hmm. We had ele- national elections. We had the yeah. Black Lives Matter um, conflict. We had yeah. a host of things. Yeah, uh, right wing, left wing Christianity. Yeah. Uh, it felt apocalyptic for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. People it? actually used that word, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. It was funny. I remember the first day that school started here, um, and we had the huge forest fire. And you drove up here on the hill, yeah, and dark. everyone was taking pictures because the sky was dark, dark, middle of the day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like people were taking pictures. We have this big cross on the hill. People were taking pictures of the cross because it had this orange background to it. Yeah, and and kids were in masks already. Because of COVID, and now they're also in masks because of forest Smoke, fires. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and I think it put everyone in a place where suddenly uh, 
they were interested in revelations. <laughs> right, popular book yeah. back then. Yeah, they're interested in what Jesus had to say about the end times. But I, I think we we fell into um, habits and um, uh, I, I guess just processes that that pushed us sideways. And I I'm not talking about okay. So I think when most people talk about this, they think, what did it do to us to ha- not attend church for a few Sundays? Yeah. Um. And I don't downplay that at all. It's a big deal. Church is incredibly important. The rhythm of church is incredibly important. It's not to be interrupted. Um, but I would also say that it's natural at times for families to fall out of that rhythm. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully not for uh, trivial things like, well, my kid's in... Um, sports, and so I don't really attend on Sunday anymore, yeah. or we just bought a boat, and so I just don't go to church anymore. I'm, I'm on the lake every weekend. I think that's a that's a bad reason to stop coming to church. But you see health crisis, you yeah. see um, you, you know, men- mental health issues, you see family disruptions, you see jobs that change, and, and so it, it's not like nobody's ever gone through a phase where they couldn't attend church before. I don't think that was the deadliest thing for us. And, and I, listen, I'm a pastor. I'm not saying church attendance is important. It's incredibly, incredibly important. But I'm saying it can be survived. It's been survived by families before. Sure, and still is. Yeah. I think the biggest thing that hurt us was the, the lack of grace and empathy and the unforgiveness that mm-hmm. we saw during that time. Yeah. Tremendous amount of turmoil, tremendous amount of animosity that was generated between people that used to be yeah. friends, and all of a sudden the lines were drawn over yeah. things like, are you vaccinated or not? Are you going to yeah. wear a mask or not? Do you mm-hmm. vote left or right or not? Red or blue? Yeah. And so forth. They, I, I was... And, and I was shocked and disappointed as a pastor how quickly people yeah. gave up on the community of Christ yeah. and instead, instead elevated over the Christ community, over the kingdom community, the community of, I don't care, masks, vaccine, gathering or not gathering, uh, this political person or this political person. They so quickly said, well, yeah, I'm kingdom and you're kingdom, but are you... And then they had another category. Right. Yeah, there'd be the and if you weren't in that category, well, then the whole thing. I've goes. cut you off, and I, I it was it was so hurtful mm-hmm. and painful as a pastor. Yeah, like I can't even describe watching your family tear itself apart like that. And I'm not saying it was everybody, but if it was just a handful of people, it was too many in your church, right. and it was more than a handful of people. Yeah, yeah. There seemed to be like this all of a sudden this national tribalism that yeah. sprung up and. Uh, if you're not part of my tribe, then yeah. then uh, we don't have anything else in common, or yeah. we were looked on, or you were looked on with yeah. you know disdain or something like and, that. And it was driven by this mechanism mm-hmm. of the media. Yeah. But listen, it was not what was cranking that. That was just the mechanism. What was cranking that mechanism was something spiritual. I I believe. I, I don't think. I don't think any news network or, you know, media conglomerate has the power to do that. I, I think the yeah. enemy... They just play on it. Yeah. Obviously, news networks exist by, yeah. you know, the crisis and the bad news is what sells. Yeah, so, the spiritual warfare yeah. was going on. Yeah. And, and it was like, it was almost like uh, we'd all fall in love with our devices. We touch them. We, like... Hundreds of times. Oh, yeah. Like, if my phone's not on me, I'm feeling... In my pockets, like, is, did my phone just buzz? You have that phantom. You ever have that phantom right, yeah, buzzing yeah, yeah. feeling phantom too? Phantom buzzing, and and it's like the enemy said, "Oh, you like those things? Let's lock you in mm-hmm. with nothing but those things. Those things, yeah, for a little while and see how that goes." And it it destroyed mental health. It, it, Do you think it people found themselves in kind of an echo chamber, so to speak? They only gathered people around them that sort of agreed with them, and and so they there's this, there's I don't know I would call it maybe listening groups. Hey, we all listen yeah. to each other mm-hmm. because we all agree with each other, and then we all bring bits and pieces of what we think is going on. I yeah. still have people to this day. I just had someone just uh, yesterday, just uh, kind of hadn't seen in a while. And one of the first things he asked me is, well, "What do you think was really going on yeah. behind the scenes?" Mm-hmm. And of course, there probably are things going on behind the scenes. But yeah. you mentioned spiritual warfare, which is mm-hmm. the ultimate behind the yeah. scenes, the, I, I the invisible that, world, I, the invisible kingdom that we talk yeah. about so much. I was having that conversation with one of our elders the other day, and we were talking about conspiracy theories. Yeah, because they're cause they're fun to talk about. Yeah, you know, yeah, sure. they're interesting. Yeah. Uh, but we were both kind of commiserating on it and, and, you know, this and that and and talking about how, like, look, um, you can have somebody with their conspiracy theory, 
can have all the facts wrong. Like, well, what you say about vaccines, I don't know if that's yeah. exactly true, or what you say about this politician, I don't know if that's exactly true. Or but they can have the direction right. So the facts wrong, but the direction right, because behind those facts, I, I don't know that there is a conspiracy of people who have all agreed on something. I believe there's a spiritual conspiracy Absolutely, yeah. behind those things. Yeah. And it, some of those people, many of those people, are unwittingly fallen into that conspiracy. Yeah. They think in the moment, I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to do, and I feel righteous about mm -hmm. it. But they're not following God. Yeah. And so they're, they're stuck yeah. listening to something else, which is either the flesh or the devil. That's all you got yeah. left. It's like it reminds me of people gawking at the scene of an accident. The accident really yeah. did happen, but everybody's interpreting what happened and putting their spin on it or whatever. So, you know, for the next few weeks, those of you that are listening or watching uh, this right now, we're going to be just kind of diving into the health of the church, but yeah. a church is only as healthy, a local church, and the church of Jesus is only as healthy as its members, right? Yeah. And so health is something that uh, obviously suffered over the last few mm -hmm. years, and in a way, um, that suffering sort of brought things to the surface, right? right. Things that maybe... It, it, it's it's kind of like, and isn't that kind of what life does, mm -hmm. right? That sometimes testing or tough times or yeah. crises or even tragedy brings things to the surface that I didn't know yeah. were there. They expose things that don't show up in good times. So I don't know how many people know this outside of pastor circles, but uh, as pastors, we know every year when the rain comes, the the call for counseling is going to come. Yeah. Right when yeah. when winter comes, yeah. when when those things happen, we know like oh, it's the time of year when people are locked in. So the summer when the summer is going on, people are out, they're having fun. You know the the family can gather around a barbecue and and the sun is out and you feel decent. But then there comes a season where mm. suddenly we're we're locked in. I can't get away from you. We're in the same all night. We're in the same room together, yeah. and we've got this problem, and I can't bounce it off my cousin and make a joke like yeah, it's yeah. you and it's kind of a cage match. Winter is around here, <laughs> and and I think. What what happened during the pandemic was partially that cage match was extended. Yeah, you know it, it just lasted even longer, and so it, it brought even more up. And and pastorally, we it, what it felt like a long winter. Yeah, in a, yeah. in a way around here. Yeah. You know, it's funny too. I was thinking about this the other day because I uh, I was remembering them saying handshakes are the thing of the past. We'll never shake hands again. You remember that? Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, just yeah. gathering. We'll never it's gather again. It's always going to be like this. Yeah. Right? We've we'll, had, we had people telling us all kinds yeah. of things about the future. We'll never gather again. You know, yeah. that that's over. And uh, e even... The I future think, is all online. The who is, gonna... Who's the artist? Someone... I remember sharing it between you and I and, and a few others. There was an artist. I want to say it was Bruce Springsteen or, or Bono that wrote an article about why we need rock concerts. Yeah. It was a, it was a well-written yeah. yeah, yeah, article. Yeah. Because there was, you know, some pushback against that. And and there are still, I think, people out there that are um, either because of their own health reasons or because of fear, they've just never unlocked. They're still they're still in that world, and you mm -hmm. see them on, on occasion. Mm -hmm. I'm not judging people that wear a mask. I don't care if you wear a mask. I'm just saying there are times I, I see, like, oh, you're, you're, just, you're just afraid, though. And, and some people have legitimate reason. They've got immune issues and stuff, but others... It, it's not that. There's something else going on. There's a spiritual warfare going on. And and it's all it reminds me of uh you remember stories of like a Japanese soldier that is yeah. in, in the jungle. He's still fighting thirty years later, doesn't he, know the war's over. Doesn't know the war's over. Exactly. They lost yeah. And, and I think that some of us don't know the war's over, but to be fair, maybe their war's not over. They're still fighting an enemy. There's still something going on. Yeah. And, you know, some of us are a little bit more out in the sun right now, and we're surviving, and yeah, yeah. I'm not saying this will never happen again, but maybe I learned some things from this pandemic, because pandemics happen. Yeah, It'll happen again, hopefully not in our lifetime, hopefully not for a very long time, but it'll happen again. And I think there's a valid question of what would you do if you had to do it over again? Well, that's an interesting question. Maybe we can kind of wrap up yeah. there, but the word apocalyptic we used earlier, mm -hmm. and... Uh, what we what could we do if we had to do it over again? We're coming up next year on an election year, which is typically a yep. pretty divisive uh, season in this country anyway. Mm -hmm. and um and then, of course, uh, there's no telling what's what's coming down. But right. it seems like I just want to refer to a passage of scripture that Jesus spoke of. Now here we are two thousand years ago, mm -hmm. and it's in matthew twenty four and someone was asking they were talking about, well, what are the end what are the apocalyptic days going to look yeah. like? What are the, going to be the signs of the end of the times? Mm -hmm. and um and, and it's a familiar, familiar passage of scripture in john twenty four, but he said, listen, at that time he said he said the church 
is going to be hated by all nations because of me. My followers are going to be hated mm -hmm. by all the nations, but because of me. Mm -hmm. So there's just going to, it seems like Jesus is saying 2,000 years ago, there's going to be this, this global um, yeah. turning against uh, the, the, the kingdom of Jesus, the, 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 the Jesus people or Jesus himself, because mm -hmm. he said it's because of me. But he said the fruit of that in verse 10, many will turn away from the faith, they'll betray and hate each other. Mm -hmm. False prophets will appear, deceive many people. But this is the verse that made me think of this when you were talking earlier. And because of the increase of wickedness, the love of many will grow cold. Mm -hmm. So it just seems like that's kind of this. You, you described spiritual warfare, right. that, that somehow the effects of whatever's going on behind the curtain, would, would part of the, uh, yeah. the way forward be and say, well, how's my heart? Is yeah. my heart... Is my heart larger? Is my heart yeah. more benevolent? Is my heart more graceful? Or is my yeah. heart more merciful? Is the adjectives he gives us is cold, so warm or cold. Um, yeah. Is my heart grown warmer yeah. or cold? And I, the part that really stands out to me, too, is they will betray and hate each other, the church. Yeah. The church will betray and hate each other. There will be persecution from the outside, but what happens on the inside? Because the church historically has been persecuted from the outside. All over the world. Yeah. Which is produced oh, oftentimes, oh almost always. Purity and, and beauty strength. and strength yeah. and growth. Miracles and power. Oh, yeah. 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 So the persecution from the outside cannot stop the church. Someone said once, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to get this quote perfectly or remember who said it, but they said, um, trying to stop Christianity by killing Christians is like trying to stop dandelions by blowing on them. Mm -hmm. It just spreads the seeds farther afield. Yeah. And so there's no, there's no way persecution from church can kill the church. It is impossible. It, it won't happen. However, if we betray and hate each other, then we're dead. We're not even the church anymore, yeah. because that we will be known as the church for our, by our love for one another. So when the love of most have grown cold, I think the, that love of most growing cold isn't just, I think, first I think of my love for God. But what do we know about our love for God? That it means nothing if I can't love my brother. Yeah. If I, if I don't love my brother as I love myself, then my love for God means absolutely nothing to him. It's like it's like a sacrifice, you know. Like, what are you sacrificing for? You you have no righteousness in your heart. I, I your sacrifice means nothing to me anymore. It, you know, there's times in the Old Testament when he said that in in, in Malachi, and I, and I think if I say to him, "I love you, I love you, I love you," but man, that that jerk who didn't agree with me yeah. on social media when I made my stand, and that, 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 I'm he's, I'm done with him. Yeah, yeah. This is over. Well, so what what would you say to people who say like, "Well, I don't hate him," right, but. I hold him in contempt. Yeah. Or, I can't have fellowship with yeah, them yeah. anymore. Yeah. Or I want nothing to do with them. Or yeah. I'm just going to, I'm going to just sort of disappear. I'm, I'm going to yeah. disconnect myself. I'm going to disengage. I, I use this line on my kids a lot when they were young and, you know, wanting to start relationships. And, and you know, it wasn't time to start relationships yet, but then they'd have this special friend that right. basically was a relationship. Right. And I tell them, hey, if it, if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. And, and I would say, someone who tells me, like, I don't hate them, but, you know, I'm disappointed in them, or I can't have fellowship with them, or then yeah. I'd say, well, if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's yeah. a duck. And so you can call it whatever you want, but mm -hmm. you've cut them off. Yeah. You've divorced right. them, yeah. essentially, yeah, yeah. you know, from your life, and, and that's not Christianity. Uh, forgiveness is at the heart of, of the Christian message. And grace is at the core of forgiveness. You, you can't let those two things go. If you've let those two things go, you've let go of Christ. You haven't let go of a brother. You haven't even let go of the local church. You've let go of Christ. Yeah. And, and you can't be counted as a brother anymore. And the reason why you can't be counted as a brother anymore is because you stopped counting people as brothers. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. And it's such a subtle, a subtle shift. I think I might be preaching. Heart. Yeah, that's good. I think though. this isn't a podcast. That'll go. <laughs> hey, so we're going to continue this over the next few weeks. Stay tuned with us and just yeah. come back. Share this with somebody maybe that, uh, mm -hmm. um, that you think would be interested in it. Join the conversation. Send us in some questions if you want yeah. to our, our, our website, and uh, we'll try to deal with those. But um, we want to talk about the health of the church and the health of the people inside of it. We're headed into the fall. We're enjoying mm -hmm. summer. But our fall series is going to be called Unwavering. Yeah, we're, we're just, excited about that. Yeah. We're going to be just talking about what does it mean to be an unwavering Christian, to yeah. have unwavering faith? Yep. Because I certainly don't want to be a, a fluctuating 
you no. know, Christian, I don't want to be a weather vane. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just moved by the winds. I think we've all, we've all felt the fluctuations before, so what, what makes us unwavering? Yeah. yeah, great question. All right, well, I love you guys. Uh, we hope to see you on Sunday where we all fellowship together. Yeah. God Come bless. on down. Take care.